What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up, everybody? I uh, just wanted to make a video for you. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions lately on actually just something that hopefully can be cleared up pretty easily. It's actually just about drawing lines and how it's done. Um, I know there's like a lot of videos on this, but I think um, maybe if I can just kind of walk you through it, maybe it'll uh, maybe it can make it kind of like an easier uh, method to learn. So, kind of want to start off. Um, I'll do two kinds of drawing lines. So one, pre-market, when we see, um, when we have like a runner, uh, versus uh, how to do some low hanging fruits. And then I'll do some like stocks on the fly, like how that goes. So let me start with, um, let's actually start with low hanging fruits. So coming into today, one of the low hangers was, uh, let's see, APOP and AMC. So we'll start with AMC. So. This was the day that was the day one that it ran, right? So we're coming into the morning. All we see is that it's around here, right? Because it's all pre-market. So let's just let's wind it down, right? So for low hangers, what I'm looking for is previous resistance, okay? I also like to use um, pivot points to help me as well. So let me get out a um, let me get out a chart. Hang on. So when I'm doing low hangers, right, I like to draw the resistance points that I see uh, and then go from there. So I start out, you know, I see that kind of 570, 580 line was the was the last line of, of the day, right? The next one of the day really is in the 590, I see 590, and then I see 6, like around 6, 610, okay? So, and... I kind of like the further it goes back, right? Because that means it has acted as a resistance before. It's probably a stronger one. That's my opinion. So now that I have these lines, what I do is I take out my line chart and I look at it, right? Mind you, again, we don't have any of this. All we have is uh, this section, but these, all the pivots are st were still there. So I look at the pivots and I say, okay, which pivot is most in play? And obviously it's a 621 because at this point we're already at 580, like so it's not going to be there. So I see that, so I think, okay, uh, where would I wanna see, like where's my ideal entry on this thing? And you know, uh, it's already sitting in the 570s, like 580s, it's, you know, it's all kinda just in this area. So I don't think that's enough. You know, I don't think that was enough of resistance, so I take that one out, so I look to the next one, 590, right? That one's not bad, right? But in my opinion, the most ideal entry on a stock like this would be the whole half dollar number. So, so I look at $6 and you know I see this little like 610 resistance as well. Now on stocks like above $5, I always give it like for me, I give it like 20 cents, like like above six. So like a six to six, six line is like 625 to me is like where I like to stop out, especially if it's like a low hanger. So yeah, so that's pretty much how I, I look at low hangers, right? Like I'll give you another example. So APOP, this is today. It kind of gapped down, but let's pretend that it didn't. Let's pretend that it was more lingering around $4. $4. I would have kind of looked at this chart just by judging it, right? If we're down here on a low hanger, when the red green line is in play, to me, that's always an area of interest to look at. So I'm going to use that. It's in between three and four. So I'm just automatically going to say the four line, you know, just because that couple cents isn't going to matter. Uh, and then I look at the last resistance, which is 420. Perfect. So. You can easily see, you know, the resistance was here, the resistance $4, which kind of lines up with this red green line. Um, that's how I like to play a lot of low hangers. If they're sitting around that area, I use red green and then the previous resistance. And again, like, you know, with low hangers, I like to see resistances like this that kind of match up a far distance. Like look how far back you can really draw that like 420. You know, that goes all the way back through here. So it just gives me more confidence. So obviously this play didn't pan out like that, um, but I think it was like a pretty cool, pretty decent opportunity. Uh, if it had like gapped up, you know into those levels so low hangers like don't stress yourself out on them again, right? You're looking 
for the last resistance in the stock that kind of matter. So it's not confusing, right? Like you wanna, you really wanna keep it simple. Like look at these charts. I know those lines are really thick now, but all you're doing is I'm just, I'm lining up the resistances from the previous day. And then you're just kind of using those to be realistic, right? Like, do you think it's gonna reach that far? Can you use pivots? Can you use VWAP to kind of uh, match up with it? Yeah, so, you know, just don't overthink it. Uh, literally just look back at the chart and like, kind of do what I just was talking about. Uh, a really good idea that I think is to every day, especially if you don't have access to the MIC archive, you know, screenshot Alex's watch list and you know you, you screenshot the data as well and you can go back every single day and practice drawing the lines you know pull up the chart from that morning um and it, i mean it doesn't matter if you know what already happened you just want to practice drawing lines and then learning you know learning like which lines matter more um and now you know if you do that enough times eventually you know by doing that with alex's watch list uh you'll be able to to really identify that. Oh, someone wanted to know about short confirmations besides a stuff move, besides like an FU candle. So confirmations for everyone are different. Uh, for me, I like to see a couple things. So actually let, let's, use, let's use ASTC as an example. So when I have my level drawn here, so now you know the top is 364. All right, that's my line. When we get the push up here, right? Notice how we didn't get any sort of significant volume increase stuff. You know, when that happens, that to me is like the dream. That's what, that's the best confirmation you can get when you get that massive volume rejection, but that doesn't always happen. So what I look for is these little wicks. So if I get this quick wick, push through and fail and like push through and reject, you know, that's, that's usually a sign that I like to throw on a starter. I'm never going to throw on full sizes, something like that. I'm going to throw on a starter. If you notice, on this push right here, where it rejected, look at the volume bar, right? Let me get you a vertical line. You get a volume bar right here, which is pretty high. And then when it fails to push on higher volume and it wicks like that, I mean, to me, that just signals that, you know, that level might reject. So I'm gonna throw on a starter usually, um, especially if the tape kind of confirms it as well. For some people, confirmation would be something more like this, where you, on the short side, you know, you have your level, you have your line to play off of. Um, you're watching it, you're watching it, you're watching it, and it tops out. And now you're waiting to see that next bounce to see if it kind of touches here. Um, you know, and if you can kind of recognize that it's not pushing up, that's your confirmation that, you know, maybe the top is in. That's one way to do it. You know, a short term thing. Let's see mark today maybe did that give a good example of it yeah here we go. Eh, not really i mean some people like i like seeing stuff like this i like seeing like a, a, a candle from 246 to 220 i like when it's on elevated volume you know tosh's death candles through the web so every confirmation is a little different um some people like to see it break through a pre-market support to signal that the move's over. You know, you know, a lot of people use this, you know, when it squeezed through VWAP, you know, it, it, it got back up to 250 and then, you know, kind of double topped right there um, and failed to put in a new high on this bounce. So again, confirmation for everyone's different. I mean, I love seeing double tops. I think that's at least not confirmation, but it's like, you know, a signal that the move's over. The lower high usually might be confirmation to me. You know, it's, it's kind of hard. You know, you have to find what you like as confirmation and what makes you comfortable uh, shorting. One of the guys asked, you know, if you're looking at a trade, what stops you from like really doing it and saying like, oh, nope, not gonna do it. One thing that I think Austin talks about a lot, which is really cool is grinding. You know, when a stock's grinding really long, uh, and not doing what you wanted to right away. So like, for example, um, on this push, where was it? Yeah, it was on this push right here. Um, I only had like 2,000 shares of this. You know, I was just going for scalps because it, the range at this time wasn't that great. You know, I was just looking at this, you know, I was looking kind of down here and all that. And basically, you know, if you draw your lines, it's, you know, there you go. But just going back to my old thing. You know, I, I actually shorted, uh, I didn't even post this trick because it was so useless. I shorted 2,000 shares right on this bounce and i'm sitting here and i'm like okay you know usually you know i wanted to put in this lower this i kind of wanted to reject vwap quickly right like if you look at this touched vwap rejected quickly touched vwap came down to here and bounced so right away i'm like mm, 
that doesn't feel right to me. Like, I felt like that should have been enough. I had a hard stop in, but I just took it off. And then next thing you know, you know, I went through and then I was at zombie time, so I had to cut it off. Um, something like that, you know, if it doesn't do what you want it to right away, sometimes I just cut it because I just, it's not right. I hope this video was helpful and I will catch you guys in chat later. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.